All right, so today we're going to be doing first and second derivatives. So uh, this is kind of like an overview of uh, derivatives, or uh, at least simple derivatives. So we're going, to, uh, we're going to be going over power rule, product, and quotient rule, and as well as uh, d over dx of fx is always f prime of x, and d over dx of f prime of x is always f double prime x. One way you could under visualize it or like understand it too is always remember the fx function could be like a position graph. F prime of x is could be like a velocity graph, and f double prime of x is like an acceleration graph. So in like physics and math, likewise, uh, this is a pretty good way of understanding uh, first and second derivatives as well as the function value. So yeah. All right, so let's get on with the first few questions. So 31 is f of x, um, x squared times e of x. So we would use, or e to the power of x, we would use the product rule here. So that would be f of x, which is x squared. And then um, e, of x, e to the power of x is g of x. So we would have g prime of x, which is x uh, to the power of x, plus 2x, which is f, prime x and then plus e to the power of x which is g of x and if we multiply that out and add it together we would get x squared e to the power of x plus 2x e to the power of x and you could just leave it in that form and that would be your final answer and now we have to find the second derivatives and since since we're finding the first and second derivative of these equations here we're only going to do 31 and 33. Uh, we're not going to do 32 or 34. So uh, now, in order to find the second derivative of this, we could just use the power rule since um, two separate you know things. So if we use a power rule on x squared e x plus 2 x e x, we would get 2 x e to the power of x plus 2 because x would uh, go away, e to the power of x. And this is in respect to x, so derivative of x. So that would be your f double prime of x for number 31. And now number 33, so this uh, f of x for first derivative, we have to use the quotient rule for this. So if we use a quotient rule, f prime of x is 1 plus x squared minus 1. And then that would be a minus, actually. x times uh, g prime of x, which is 2x. And then all that would be over x squared minus 1 squared. And now if we were to simplify that, we would get x squared minus 1 minus uh actually 2x squared and then if we simplify that even further we would get negative x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 squared so uh, we could also bring in the negative from uh the top so we could have the addition sign there and uh, that would be your first derivative of that and now in order to find the second derivative, um, I erased all that on the top out. So for this uh, second derivative, we're starting with this x negative x squared plus 1 on the top. And the bottom, uh, if we need to factor it out or simplify it out, we would have x fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. And that would be your thing. Uh, polynomial on the bottom so now we have to find derivative of this to give us f double prime so if we do that on the top we would have f prime of x which is 2x and uh, we're also going to take the negative with it since it uh, relates to the top and then times g of x which is x4 minus 2x squared plus 1 minus x squared plus 1, the rather negative x squared plus 1, and then multiplied by 4x cubed 
minus 4x. It's a little bit, it doesn't really fit there, but uh, now let's simplify all of this out. We would have negative 2x to the fifth power minus, or rather actually plus 4x to the third power minus 2x. And then here we would have negative x squared times 4x3 is negative 4x4 plus 4x to the fourth power because of this negative here. And then negative 1 times 4x3 is negative 4x3 plus 4x3. And then negative 1 times, or, or rather negative x squared times 4x is plus, plus uh, 4x cubed, which would give us negative 4x cubed. And then negative 1 times negative 4x is positive 4x, which is negative 4x because of that negative sign in the front. So now if we combine like terms, we would have there's negative 4x there, negative 2x, that's negative 6x. And then there's, uh, let's cross that out. There's no second power, we do third now. So 4x3, 4x3. Uh, negative 4x3, those cross out. So plus 4x cubed. And then plus 4x to the fourth power. And then we're left with net minus 2x5. And that would be your numerator. So let's write it out now. So we have negative 2x to the fifth power plus 4x fourth plus 4x3 minus 6x. That's your final numerator. And on the denominator would be this whole function squared. So if we do that real quick, we're not going to simplify it out because we don't need to. So it would be negative, uh, it would be x uh, to the fourth power minus 2x squared plus 1, and all that would be squared. So for 33, that would be your final answer. It would be a uh, kind of long and tedious answer, but that would be your uh, f to the second derivative power, or f to the second derivative answer. And now we're going to move on to, we're not going to do 36, so we're going to do 35. So what we need to do is find the tangent line, equation of the tangent line, uh, of y, if this uh, f of x, we'll call it. So y equals x squared over 1 plus x. If we use the quotient rule here, we would be doing 2x, which is f prime of x, plus 1 plus x, or times 1 plus x, minus x squared times 1, because the derivative of 1 plus x is 1, over 1 plus x squared. So if we uh, simplify everything on the top, we would have 2x plus x squared, or 2x squared, and then minus x squared, and yeah, the minus x squared. So we could uh, simplify that into x squared plus 2x over 1 plus x squared. Now what we need to do is plug in this one into this derivative so that we can find the slope of the tangent line. So we plug in one on the numerator, we have one plus two, and then on the bottom we have one plus one squared, which is four. So three over four x, three over four is our slope of the tangent line. And uh, we know it hits the y value half after one x value. So if it goes down three fourths for every one x value, then we know that uh, the y value at x equals zero is negative one half minus three fourths, which would give us negative one fourth. And uh, this would be your equation of the tangent line for y equals x squared over one plus x. All right, so now we're gonna move on to 45. Suppose that uh, f function f5 equals 1, f prime of 5 equals 6, g5 equals negative 3, and g prime of 5 equals 2. So given these values, we have to find, um, using the power rule here, quotient and 
another quotient rule here. So let's write out the rules just so we can kind of visualize it. So the power rule for A that we're going to use is going to be F G prime plus uh, F prime times G. So that's going to be the power rule. And then the quotient rule here, we're going to use F prime G plus F G prime. And then this is flip G is over uh, G over F. So we're just going to kind of flip it. G prime F plus F prime G. And now let's uh, let's go plug in some values. So for A, F time F is F of 5. All this is in terms of 5. So F of 5 is 1. So 1 times G prime is 2. Plus F prime is 6 times g which is negative 3 so we would have 2 plus negative 18 which gives us negative 16 that would be our answer there and then this is f prime uh, which is 6 and g which is negative 3 and then f g prime we kind of already know f g prime right here 1 times 2 because they're they're the same thing. So that would be minus. Oh, yeah, this on the bottom we have g squared. I forgot to mention that f squared on the bottom. So we on the top we would have 1 times 2. And then on the bottom here we would have g squared, which is g is negative 3. So negative 3 squared. Let's write that down there. So if we were to simplify this, we would have negative 18 minus 2, which is negative 20. So right, let's write negative 20. And then negative 3 squared is just 9. So 20 over 9 is our final answer. And then for C, G over F prime of 5. So G prime is 2. F is 1 and then oh yeah that's minus quotient rule minus all right f prime is 6 and then g is negative 3 and all that goes over f uh, squared which is 1 squared so we simplify all that we get 2 minus negative 18 which uh, becomes 2 plus 18 which is 20 over 1 so your final answer would be 20 for that and that is for abc All right so i want you guys to try number 38 so you could pause the video and try it out all right so number 38 is y equals x plus x e x so uh, for Finding out the derivative to number 38, we're going to actually have to use two uh, rules. So we can use the power rule for this, and we have to use the product rule for this because it's x times e to the power of x. So for the uh, first value, we can just use the power rule, which would be 1, and then that would be plus. Now we have to use the product rule for this, which is, if you remember correctly, it's f g prime plus f prime g now f is x and g is going to be e to the power of x so we're going to have x e x plus one times e x now if we simplify it we get one plus e x plus x e x now this is our derivative function, so what we have to do in order to find the tangent and normal line slopes is we have to plug in this x value, 0. So if we plug in the x value, we get 1 plus e to 0 power plus uh, 0 times e to 0 power. So we know x is uh, 0 times anything is 0, so that's crossed out. e to the 0 power is 1 plus 1. 
which gives us 2. So what we know now is the slope of the tangent line is 2. And the normal line, we're going to equal it to n. The slope of the normal line should be this reci uh, negative reciprocal of 2x, which is negative 1 half x. And now we need to find the y value, but we know that um, the y-intercept of uh, the tangent normal line have to be 0 because they both cross uh, the coordinate of 0, comma 0. So your final tangent line equation would be y equals 2x, and your normal line equation is just negative half x. All right, so I want you guys to try number 46 uh, using these values right here. Answer A, B, C, and D. All right, so let's take a look at A. So A is h of x equals 3 times fx plus 8 times g of x. So uh, we just need to do some straight plugins. 3 times f of x, which is, which in this case, uh, we're using 4 for all of our values. f of x is 2. And then plus 8 times g4, which is 5. So we would have 6 plus 40, which is 46, and that would be our answer. So now b is h of x equals fx times g of x, which now we have to use a product rule. Uh, let's write it out here again. fg prime plus f prime g. And now, so f of x times g of x, we would do uh, f4, which is 2 times g prime which would be negative 3 plus f prime which is 6 and then g which is 5 so now if we add that add that all together we get negative 6 plus uh, 30 which is negative or positive 24 so that'll be your answer and now h of x is f of x over g of x, which we have to use the quotient rule now, which means that is f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. And now, so if we plug it in, we get f prime is 6 times g, which is 5 minus f, which is 2 times g prime which is negative 3 and over g which is 5 squared is g squared and if we simplify that we get 30 minus negative 6 which is 36 and now we uh 5 squared is 25 and uh, we could just leave it like that that would be our final answer so for the time constraint of this video, we're not going to do D and uh, so A, B, C. Uh, you know we're using not we're not using a rule here. We're using the product rule here and the quotient rule. And uh, so that's basically it for the whole video. So uh, yeah, first and second derivatives, um, product and quotient rule. Uh, knowing the formula values are really important, as well as how to visualize first and second derivatives, as well as uh, you know, uh, getting the second derivative and the first one. The most important part is being clean with your work, making sure everything's readable and uh, so you could figure out the derivatives uh, easily and not make any mistake. That is a really big important part of it. So uh, yeah, that's basically it.